we are at the scene of the crime, Colossal Con, Sandusky, Ohio, where the band Automaton has just performed. Guys, can you tell me a little bit? About, well, first of all, start with your names and then tell me a little bit about yourselves and then your band. So, Commander Flanagan. Yeah. Captain Luther. Duncan Batchworth III. James O'Brien. <laughs> and what are your backgrounds in music? <laughs> I, uh, I actually played bass for 10 years before I took up singing, so... Really? Mm -hmm. I was in another band called Assailant out of Dayton, and uh, I've just moved on to much brighter projects. Very cool. Been in a band, well, during this called Freak for about a year and a half, or a year. I've only been playing drums for about a year and a half, so that's about the extent of my musical... Really? Yeah. Good for oh. a year and a half, isn't he? Yeah, he's good for a year and a half, right? He's good in general. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, uh, been playing bass for about seven, eight years. With this guy, uh, we used to be in a band called Presented Offenses, which was but yeah, I've been playing mainly bass for about about eight years, and I picked up guitar recently, but that's irrelevant. And you, sir, playing since <coughs> sophomore year of high school. You were playing. Freshman, sophomore, something like that. So, three or four years now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somewhere about. <laughs> I'm 23 now, and I've loved power metal ever since I was a kid, so it's felt good finally playing in the band. Very cool. So, how did Autonomaton happen? Autonomaton. It started with a, uh, a brief discussion uh, at a Plato's Club, which is a, a thrift store, actually. You were discussing briefs at a uh, thrift store. Exactly. exactly. Only briefly. <laughs> I don't want to be short with you, but please go on. This gentleman was wearing an Iron Maiden shirt and, you know, hanging up shirts on the, the racks. And I just come up, I said, oh, hey, Iron Maiden, great band. And I play bass in a band uh, that does Iron Maiden-ish stuff. And I showed him a photo from my phone, which I was wearing these goggles. Very cool. And he says to me, he's like, oh, you're into steampunk. I was like, yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, he says, I, I think it'd be really cool if someone started, like, a steampunk power metal band. And I was like, yeah, all right, yeah. So I bought my stuff and left. I tried to go to sleep that night, and it sat right here in my brain all night. I woke up, and the first thing I did in the morning is I called that that uh, thrift store. Uh -huh. and I said, "Who is your bearded guy? I must speak with him. I must the talk beard. to that guy. I must guy. talk to the man with the beard." One and only. <laughs> and it happened from there. He invited some gents out to play pool with us. He okay, said, "Dave, no. what happened was <laughs> he and I were working together at a different establishment, a haunted house, as it were." And uh, he comes to me and he goes, we start talking about it because he's got, a, he, he's got the metal look. And right. I was like, okay, so I, I think he and I will get along. So I start talking to him and he's like, uh, are you familiar with steampunk? I was like, I've, I've heard it, I don't know really what it is. And so he tries to briefly explain it to me. There we go, sand brief again. But uh, he says, <laughs> I think it would be cool to start a steampunk power metal band. And I go, that's a really cool idea. I think that would go really well. And he goes... And at the time, I was between bands, and I really wanted to play, I really wanted to play bass in a band. So he looks at me and he goes, do you, and I'm thinking, yes, yes, you know any guitarists? <laughs> yes, yes I do. Yeah, okay, I know of one. No, so. no, no, you see how it happens, me and this guy were working out of Panera Bread together when I was <laughs> All right, funny, funny coincidence, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Are you? Are all these stories true? It's all in our yeah. Yeah. It's like Seinfeld, but we have cell phones, so we can text each other. You know, so right. no, no problems happen. Not many. So you two were working at we Panera. Were Panera probably in, in 2000, 2008, 2007. No, it was like six, man. 2006. 2006. I had long hair. I had an Iron Maiden wallet that I was showing off to him while I did the dishes. <laughs> when he worked on the sandwich line, this I kid said was, you sounded like Barlow. <laughs> Matt Barlow of Ice Earth. I would sing in the back of the dish room before I was really a singer. That's, that's kind of ironic because me and you worked together. You two worked together for a short period. We worked together. Automaton was meant to be. Wibbly wobbly. Timey wimey. Part time jobby. <laughs> part timey wimey job stuff. Yeah. Okay, well, tell me about Automaton. What is Automaton? That's the question. Automaton is a concept group. We decided that power metal tell stories. Mostly it's medieval or high fantasy trope. We decided to take those stories and apply them to you know, this, this Victorian realm 
the Victorian influence realm because you know it influenced our imaginations, it made us want to you know sing louder, play harder, you know, hit the drums more. And we can do whatever we want because steampunk. Mm -hmm. Steampunk is open to interpretation. <laughs> so we uh, we're highly excited to to marry these two concepts together. In fact, someone, some gentleman on the internet called us an uncomfortable synthesis. <laughs> We'd like to challenge him on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh, what's your challenge? Oh. The challenge is um Listen. this is going to be the most comfortable synthesis in Steampunk. Listen to our <laughs> I music wouldn't you judge say it. that. All right. I like being uncomfortable. All right. We we are an uncomfortable synthesis. That may end up making more people uncomfortable, yeah. but that's okay. Metal is something that hasn't been in this realm of Steampunk. And Steampunk is one thing that hasn't been in the realm of metal. We've got two fan groups that were sort of converging. In fact, at our one of our first shows at a convention, uh, the Steampunk Symposium in Cincinnati, we had to give a disclaimer that hasn't really been done. We said, for those of you with goggles and equipment and things you've built, please be wary. There's going to be a mosh pit right up front, you know, and step back and allow the people to mosh. So no one, you know, had their expensive gear damaged. There, there wasn't a mosh pit, but we gave the disclaimer <laughs> there anyway. There were people dancing. Well, there there was, was some dancing. There was one there, tonight. There, there was one here, and I had to move my camera fairly quick. Well, there were a few <laughs> for Colossal Con. Somebody, somebody got injured. I hope he's okay. Injured what? It was something about his mouth. I think he got much Oh, oh man. Oh, well. We need to figure Changing out. Changing the subject. Of course. <laughs> So, uh, I, I, after uh, seeing you at um, the Steampunk uh, Empire Symposium four weeks ago, five weeks ago, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, up in the right. ether, two weeks ago, and now here, I pretty much figured I had to do an interview with you. <laughs> so, um, tell me. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Why, why do you keep crossing paths with me? <laughs> now, where are you going from here? We really thoroughly enjoy the convention circuit. And we love playing people who are appreciative. And there are a lot of appreciative people here. Metalheads crawl out of their holes to come to events like this. Steampunk people as well. We've, we've got the crowds coming here to see us. So. Mm -hmm. And so they have, they, they have a great time. What we want we is we want smiling faces. We want people getting into the show. We want people feeling the energy and feeling our story. And conventions seem to be where the magic happens the most. Very cool. Now I asked you to tell me about your band and where you're going. Mm -hmm. I've given you some big openings to tell me about a couple things that you haven't mentioned. <laughs> Uh, shameless plugs. We are also shameless plugs time. sometimes. Shameless plug time. All right, I Let's can give a shameless plug. Comic it. book. Yes. What, what is this with a comic okay. book? Okay, our concept is going to grow. We have a story called The Azimuth. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, hand off the screen. The Azimuth <laughs> is our comic book. Ooh, okay. Open it up, man. And show, show me what um, one of our fans, Lauren Carney, has illustrated, his sister. his sister has illustrated a story that we sent to her about the concept of the band. She made it come to life, you know, which she said we already did through our music, but through her imagination we're able to get a visual uh, environment in which we, uh, our characters, oops, I'm going crazy here, our characters uh, flourish. I can't even hold this. Like, I can't hold a microphone as I learned tonight, apparently. <laughs> I'm trying to focus in on it. No Negative. problem. There we are. Let's see. I can bring it closer. I'm not a lazy ass. I can okay. actually stand up. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe I am a lazy ass. I don't really want to stand <laughs> You're not standing. Up. You can stand up, can you? Uh, uh, oh, look at that. Page uh, turn. Okay, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> yeah, you're back in the group shot again. Okay, so we kind of had a fuzzy uh, view of that. Uh, so tell me about the, the comic. Um, there's a story to it. There is, absolutely. Our characters um, are all members aboard the Initiative, which is an airship. It's kind of a beat up airship that's seen better days. But uh, my character, Duncan Batchworth III, is a journalist who hired this crew, plus 12 others, to deliver the azimuth, this newspaper, from one nation that colonized another to uh, spread word of how they're uh, dumping toxic waste into the colony and causing a lot of trouble. Basically what he's saying is that he's all wallet 
And we're the actual heroes here. All right. <laughs> Just letting you know. Well played. So his character pays for the thing. Yes, yes, yes. exactly. Absolutely. And your characters get shot. Shot at. Shot destroyed, down. Shot destroyed. down. Yes. The Ship blows up. Livelihood destroyed. Yep. All their friends gone. And we keep he complains running. the whole time, oh. but he pays us for booze. Yeah. So. We keep him because <laughs> he pays us. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, um, CDs. Do you have any CDs? We have an EP coming up. Uh, ha! There we, we go. You know. Shameless plug. Shameless, shameless plug. Shameless shameless plug. plug. The EP, uh, we, we titled it Age of the Smokestacks. Yes. Yeah, so it's Age of the Smokestacks. It's our scene setter. It's, um, it's four or five songs, five songs, with, um, with dialogue in between. Almost like an old-time radio drama in which our characters speak. And we have uh, sound effects. And it's just, it's, it's a hell of a time. Very fun to record with Michael Reagan. But yes, our producer Mike Reagan, uh, he shares the vision of what we're going for, and he put together uh, the, the old-timey radio drama and a pristine heavy metal sound for our songs. Very cool. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to turn on the camera about this. Right. <laughs> you gotta. Well, guys, I like to close my interviews with. Uh, Giving the, the uh, group an opportunity to tell me a little something a little bit weird and wonderful about yourselves, because my, my main site is the Weird Review. Ah. So. Uh, was the well, interview thus far not enough? <laughs> Are we not wild and crazy enough? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, here it is. We're going to lay it on the line here. We play Dungeons and Dragons. We oh, play role-playing. No. <laughs> there you have it. Guys, we were rolling dice. We were making character sheets just for this concept. How do you think we actually sat down and said, what kind of character do you want to play in this band? Oh, well, you know, this gentleman here says, I think it'd be cool to be the captain of the ship. I said, okay, well, being the captain of the ship comes with this responsibility. Actually, no one chose mindset. the captain of this ship, yeah. so I was like, I, I guess I'll do well, it. Nobody chose, <laughs> nobody chose the captain. He said, I'll do it, and I took the responsibility. Mm -hmm. As the first mate. <laughs> we, we pretty much rolled up characters the way you would for Dungeons & Dragons without the numbers. We got into the mindset because we are terrible weeks. Yeah. Well, since, since you're talking about Dungeons and Dragons, I have to ask, what do you? Which version do you play? Four. No, oh, I play four. I will say it proudly. Three point five. Pathfinder. I don't play D and D. I play Pathfinder. Three point seven. <laughs> so, uh, you in the goggles play D and D Pathfinder. Three point five. Three point seven five. Pathfinder, which and you you uh, Pathfinder. you definitely Pathfinder. Four I'm fourth point. edition. I'm. I mean, I ain't ashamed. <laughs> you're gonna get hit mail. Like, you really are. You cannot come out on camera and say that you like fourth edition. The power system's great. Huh? And the skill challenges. What about you? Um, I play 3.5, but honestly, I prefer D20 modern. D20 modern. D20 modern. D20 modern. Yeah. Okay. That one's fun too. So you, you've, you've really revealed, now you've revealed a little bit of your, your, your true geekishness. <laughs> you all disagree on which system you have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is the clue of the band, And only right? one likes D&D 4th Edition. <laughs> only and one person wrong. probably in this whole building, actually. Like, <laughs> seriously. Oh, Duffy, oh, no. no! Our roadie is in my group. Uh -huh. Fire. Currently. Oh, I see, and you're the DM? Uh, no, I'm the changeling uh, trickster, not rogue, what is it? I'm a ranger, thank you, I'm a ranger. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to him. Are before. you sure you've been playing? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. No, he He's hasn't. Playing for us. He has not a little bit too much of the... Uh... <laughs> In the basement? Gotta <laughs> open a window. Oh, gotta open the windows. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, well, thank you, gentlemen, so much, and I use that term thank loosely. Thank you. <laughs> 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 and is there anything you'd like to close with? Is there an open area over here? Oh no, no, don't listen. I've, no, I've got some. Live in reverie till we drink to your memory. Yeah. And keep an ear out for Age of the Smokestacks coming in about a week or in about two. About a week or two. Yeah. Yeah. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Woo. Shameless plug. SteamPoweredMetal.com 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 Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. you. I, from... I, I, um, oh, oh, come on. <laughs> and... No, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> and from Sandusky, Ohio and Colossal Con, this has been Automaton with a weird review.
Thanks, guys. Thank you.